This man is retired, but not relaxed. Kobe Bryant recently launched the Mamba Sports Academy. It's a holistic multi-sport training facility in L.A. for young athletes. Rachel Nichols was there recently. She brought along Hall of Famer Tracy McGrady to talk about why NBA players do have a right to make trade demands, why Kobe says McGrady was the hardest player he ever had to defend against, and whether James Harden can carry the Rockets to a championship. Bryant against McGrady. Oh, McGrady versus Kobe Bryant. Wow. What was it like going against each other? I loved it because I knew I was going to get his best. I had to come and play against this dude every single possession. Like, there's no relaxing. Mm -hmm. I had to stay locked in, especially the 0 3 season when I led the league in scoring. And this dude rung off like nine straight 40 points. I was like, oh, hell no. Nah. I can't let him come get me for the <laughs> scoring title. I might not win a championship this year, but I'm damn sure getting a scoring title. And they asked about the hardest player I ever had to defend. I said, it's a pretty easy one. It was Tracy, because he could do everything I could do. Three, left shoulder, right shoulder, mid-range, the whole thing. But he was taller. James Harden with 61 points. Another 50-burger here for James Harden on consecutive home games. Since the NBA-ABA merger, there are only three humans on earth who have had these crazy scoring streaks of 30 points or more over and over and over again. You had it 14 games in a row, you had it 16 games in a row, and James Harden, of course, crazy streak yeah. this season. What do you think of what he's doing right now? Well, I think he, he has to do what he has to do in order for his team to win championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games, and he's doing that. So are you saying you don't think James Harden and the Rockets, as constructed, can win a title? Not with this style of play, it won't win, right? With one player dominating the ball. Because, listen, if you take one player, you put him at the top of the key, or you put him on the wing, and you're running screen rolls, you're always in front of the defense. Mm -hmm. The defense can key on that, mm -hmm. particularly in the playoffs. And that's it's easy, easy to defend. Yeah. It's easy to defend. Now, what he's doing is absolutely remarkable, though. And I think it's a testament to how remarkable it is because people are now trying to minimize what it is that he's doing. I mean, he's doing some phenomenal stuff, man. Anthony Davis wants out of the Big Easy. He has requested a trade. You went on the radio once yeah. and said you wanted to be traded from L.A. What do you think of A.D. wanting out of New Orleans? Well, he's got a right to do what the hell he wants to do. I mean, I, listen, it, it's, you know, teams have the right to trade players. Players should have the freedom to be able to say and voice their opinion. Now, you can agree with it, you can disagree with it, but A.D. still has the right to say what he wants to say. You know, you spend six or seven years and you feel like you're not competing for a championship, like at some point, you're going to want to get the hell out of there and, and <laughs> go to an organization that is serious about winning. Yeah. I dealt with that, right? I dealt with that in Orlando. I mean, you yeah. see your friends right. winning championships, and, you know, that's the ultimate goal. All right, so, Mr. Laker, yeah. how aggressive should this year's, this season's, this week's Los Angeles Lakers be about That's getting Anthony GM. Davis? You know, you, know, you know great basketball players don't make good GMs. Mm -hmm. I was, so said the guy with Magic Johnson running his franchise. He's the president. He's the president. He's the president. Do you, want, Rob's do you GM. want your team to make a big push for AD? How aggressive uh, should they be? It, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what your long-term objectives are. Now, by signing LeBron, you're already making an indication that you want to win now. Right, so I think it'd be a smart thing to do for the Lakers to look at that, right? But at the same time, you know, it's a, it's a, you got to play a little bit of poker, right? I'll change the subject for you. I want to ask you about LeBron. Yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence that he had the worst stretch of games out, the worst injury of his career went after he turned 34. You snapped your Achilles at age 34. What do you think LeBron's timeline is and the pressure that puts on the Lakers in terms of their overall well, timeline? It's fine. I mean, it just depends how he adapts his game. Because right? at some point you have to evolve. So the speed and the power that he's used to playing with has to change, mm -hmm. which he can. Because now he has a guy given size to be able to adapt and go to below the free throw line, use more of a power game. And he, he's more than capable of doing that and playing for a long, long time. Michael Jordan played when he was 40. Yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played when he was 40. Vince Carter is out there playing when he's 42. Still yeah, I mean, do you guys think, oh, maybe I could still go back out no, there and do it? No, I, 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 I play one pickup game. It's hurting, you know. I tried, I tried at the house Monday. I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> hurting. <laughs> oh. If I wanted to, I could. I don't want to. You sure? I'm sure.
the love sure. is gone. If I wanted to, I could. With the technology, nutrition, studies, all the things that you have now, you could certainly do it. I just don't want to. All right, let's get back to the usage rate that Kobe Bryant touched on here. The highest for Kobe in a season where he actually won the title, it was 32% that 09-2010 uh, season, the seventh highest in any season of his career. We put him there on the screen. Harden's usage rate is at 40% this season. Hmm. So what does the beard think about what Kobe had to say? I mean, I have to be ball dominant just because we have injuries. You know, we had injuries throughout the course of the year. So, um, but when we get Chris, you know, in the rhythm and Eric back and get our full roster, we got multiple guys that can make plays, multiple guys that can dominate the ball. So, I mean, for right now, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's probably right. You know, this way that we're playing won't happen in the play. It won't get us to where we want to go. But we haven't had a full roster yet. So um, I'm excited for that to come. All right, to see more of Rachel's convo with those two NBA legends, including why Kobe says he actually beat T-Mac one-on-one, which Tracy denies ever happened. The Jump, today, 3 Eastern, ESPN. Come on, guys. It's not rocket science. <laughs> I would love to play with a lot of great players. That's just who I am. Great look by James Davis for a two-hand jam. James to the basket. James. Elio and Davis. I am Nicole. That's who I am. He says his name is Bobby Marks. I believe him. Okay, look, L.A. has reportedly, according to Woj, upped its offer in an attempt to get Anthony Davis in their preferred uniform. They've offered Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, two first round picks in exchange for Davis and some contract support. But they're gonna have to do better because the Pelicans haven't even countered an offer yet. What kind of a deal would actually make sense for both teams? Well, I think we first have to look at what their um, their assets are right now. We've talked about the first round picks right now. Right now, the Lakers are willing to offer two. New Orleans wants four. That's a lot. That would be four unprotected first-round picks. The young players, Ingram, Ball, Kuzma. Okay, that checks off one of the boxes. The expiring contracts, those are more just cap fillers. Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley, uh, Lance Stevenson. The likelihood those players never even get to New Orleans. So that's just to make the money work. Here's the problem. By taking a player like Solomon Hill back, that's a concession. This number for next summer goes to there and how do you fill out your roster that is the big the decision and this is a big sticking point two two first round picks to go up to four right now okay so if they would make a deal happen the big question is what does what's left what does the, the lakers roster even look like because you've got anthony davis and you've got lebron james i get it that that looks awesome but you've given up these these guys aren't there they're gone no they're not and we can put anthony davis where uh kyle kuzma is we can put um we can put, uh, we'll put Contavious Caldwell Pope where Lon uh, Lonzo Ball, we'll put Aveka Zubak where uh, Tyson Chandler, uh, you still have Josh Hart. And this is, this is your roster right now. We even even talked about their depth. Their depth would be depleted. And as we talked, we mentioned before, you've got $15 million in cap space mm -hmm. to go out and fill all the holes, uh, th you know, this upcoming summer. I think, I mean, LeBron has probably done more with, with less. In past years. In the East, in the, though. You make a good point. Uh, that's that's Bobby Marks. There are two days until the trade <laughs> deadline. We'll see what happens. It is Thursday at 3 Eastern. And keep in mind, Sports Center will be live 7 a.m. Eastern to 1 o'clock Eastern, leading you into a three hour trade deadline special. Come on, guys. It's not rocket science. <laughs> I would love to play with a lot of great players. That's just who I am. Great look by James Davis. More things to talk about than just the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Woj is here. The NBA trade deadline is this week. It's Thursday, 3 p.m. Anthony Davis is still, at least at this moment in time, a member of the Pelicans. He'd like to be a Laker. The Lakers would like him. Where do those trade talks stand? Well, the, the Lakers made an offer last week. They, they gave them a few. They gave New Orleans a few variations of offers, none that uh, really bowled uh, the Pelicans over. They're going to talk again this week, and you know, the Lakers know that their offer is going to have to increase. They're going to have to put multiple first round picks in it. They're probably going to have to take a bad salary or two back from the Pelicans, and they're going to have to, you know, unload 
if most, if not all, of their young players, good young players, into a deal uh, to get the Pelicans to do this by Thursday because the Pelicans can roll this over into the offseason when they can have uh, presumably Boston involved in the trade talks and Boston has uh, you know, a bigger war chest of assets to offer New Orleans so that the Lakers are going to have to, between now and Thursday, get more aggressive with their offers. I mean, you look if you're the Lakers, you look at what the Cavaliers are now, right? And what life post-LeBron is if you deal all your young assets, and, and then you're back in the lottery game.